Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on African Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sisters. Yo, strange things do happen in this world. So this is the narration of that message that she sent to me. The narration reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brand, me and my husband, we are both pastors. When we got married, Brother Nashi, we were still in Bible school and currently we have four kids. Then we used to be pastors in this other area that is called Nyabira here in Zim. But we have since moved from that area. We are now pastoring this other assembly in another area. Me and my husband, we met at a Bible school. When we were at that Bible school, we were studying our theology. And after we had finished doing our theology at that Bible school, that was when we were given our our assembly that we were supposed to lead. And by the time that we came out of Bible school, after we had gotten married, I had fallen pregnant. When I had fallen pregnant, Brother Nashi, we were then taken to this other area in Mutoko. It is very deep, deep in the villages there in Mozi. So when we arrived there, the first thing that happened was that along the way, while we were on the bus because we could not even afford to have a car. So we were given some money. We had to use the bus from the head office of our church, which is in Harare. Then we went to Mutoko using the bus. But along the way, my husband, he woke up and he told me to pray. We started praying on the bus because he said that he had seen a vision. And in this vision, he had seen that in that village where we were going to, there was a witch, an old lady who had been bewitching a lot of people in that same village. My brother, when we arrived in that village, things were not okay. You know, village people, villages are poor people and if you expect that they are going to give you something then you will be lying to yourself the only thing that we could say that this was like the expensive items that we were being given sometimes someone would bring a god another person would bring a live chicken that was like when they would have sacrificed a lot as their love offering usually at church when it will be time for love offering they would give us ground nuts as well as maize grain then we will take the ground nuts as well as the as the maize grain then we will sell it off to some people that were going to sell the groundnuts as well as the maize in Harare. Life was just hard, Brother Nashi. Life was just too hard. Me and my husband, we were that kind of people whereby whenever we would meet up with other pastors as well as bishops, they would just treat us as if we were not like pastors like they were as for my husband he could not afford to buy a car i remember back in those days that my husband he used to use this other bicycle that is what he would use going around teaching a lot of people about the word of the lord but this thing it would hurt me a lot because Whenever my husband would go for these pastors meeting in their forums, I would always feel this heartbreak because my husband, he only had one green suit. That was all that he had each and every year. That was all that he would take to those pastors forums. And it was really painful. It even reached a point in our lives whereby my husband's shoes, we had to tie it with a wire. You know, we used to take my husband's shoe to the shoemaker, but we had so much credit and he told us that he didn't want any of our maize grains that we used to give him or the chickens. He wanted money to pay for his son's fees. And when we felt to pay him, that was when he took one of my husband's shoe, the one that we said that when it was a big Sunday, when we had guests from Harare, he will wear that shoe. So it was broken and torn. The only shoe that he, he had now, we had to tie it with a wire. They are those copper wires. We used to call them soft wires. You would take that copper wire and you would make a hole at the sole of his shoe. Then you would make another hole again so as to tie the shoe together. 
As for me, Brother Nashi, it was just painful, really painful. I can say that I was just an embarrassment to being a pastor. Whenever I would go to this ladies' forum, these ladies that I would be with, you know, they were those ladies when they would go to the bathroom because each and every morning at the hotel that we were booked at, people would wake up, then they would go and bath. So usually in one room, it will be three pastors wife or two pastors wife that will be staying in a single room sometimes we would go and bath together brother nashi i'll pretend to iron my dress i'll pretend to do something else because i didn't want the other pastors wives to find out that i had panties my underwears that were torn i didn't have the same bathing soap that they have because these women they had those body scrubs that they would use as for me i was just using this green bar so it was really embarrassing as for the dresses they were really old i used to have this other wig my mom had given me that wig on my wedding day and it was that same wig that i was using it was just an old thing whenever we would go to church the pastors the other pastors they would never be want to be seen hanging around us and only the poor people would go to my husband so that my husband can pray for them i still remember that there was this other conference so in our church if there is a conference all the pastors after the main speaker of the day would have preached then the main speaker will be taken to this other dining area so that he can just eat or drink something so the remaining pastors they will stand uh, close to the stage just underneath the stage so that the rest of the people will be in that church will come and then they would receive their prayers they will be forming this queue each and everyone will go to the pastor of their choice i remember that there was this other conference my husband kept on standing there because there was no one that wanted to go and to be prayed by him this is what happens to you when you are poor there is no one in this world that wants to be associated with someone that is poor so when they were looking at these pastors that had came from all over zim that were wearing nice suits they thought that them wearing those nice suits it meant that if they would get some prayers for them then god was going to bless them but my husband he was a very powerful man brother nashi behind his back when we had came back from that conference there is no woman who wants to see his husband being humiliated by the other pastors i had to do what any woman could have done in my situation it was for the first time in my life that i went and i knelt down before someone and this person that i went to kneel down before she was a white garment prophetess when i went to that white garment prophetess she told me that she was going to give me you know those river stones and after she had given me those river stones i was supposed to put them in the bathing water when i'll be placing the when i'll be giving my husband his bathing water i was not supposed to tell him that the stones that were inside the bucket they were actually stones that i had taken that i had been given by a prophetess from the white garment church so since we were like very deep in the villages sometimes i would go to the river and this i did purposefully at that time and when my husband will ask me what are those sto stones in the bucket then i'll say that you know that at the river there are a lot of stones i cannot sit down and pick up the stones out of the bucket one by one so for three days my husband he birthed himself with that prophetess stones that he had so for three days my husband birthed himself with those holy stones even though he did not know anything so after this i then started to notice that these prayers they were actually waking because for the first time in my life you know what brother Dash, what happened there was this other woman who came that woman came and she gave a life to jesus christ and she had four gods that she gave us and this was really great brother Nashi. And I said, if that prophetess can make us to be given for God by uh, this woman who is now attending at our church, maybe if I go straight to a traditional healer, because that prophetess, I had asked her where she had get, 
gotten these powers she told me that her grandmother the one who was now possessing her body the spirit of her grandmother was once a traditional healer so she wanted to be a christian so she had to go and ask the spirit of her ancestor to allow her to go to church so she was just using her grandmother's spirit to heal the people that were coming to her then i said right 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 so it means that i can actually go to any traditional healer she then said you can go to that woman that same woman whom my husband had seen in that vision that other one who was a witch doctor this woman the first time that when we had a small crusade when we were opening that assembly she came and when she came she had a lot of ritual stuff that she was using your reed baskets your color bushes as well as those clay pots she said that can you please burn these things because i do not want them so my my husband had burned everything and destroyed her altar it was that same woman whom a lot of villagers were afraid of because she was a witch when i heard about her brother nash i said what am i going to do i then spoke with my husband as if the holy spirit had spoken with me i said oh my dear husband do you still remember that old lady that once came and gave a life to jesus christ my husband said yes yes yeah. i still remember i always pray for him i then said the holy spirit has spoken with me and the holy spirit has said that i should pay her a visit to so that i can find out why she is no longer coming to church we do not want her soul to be lost she is not supposed to be a witch again i then went there brother nashi when i went there my husband i left him because i said that i just wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one session with that old lady when i arrived at that old lady's house i then said to that old lady you see me here holding this bible this bible grandma it has not given me anything coco please try to give me something that can make my husband to be respected because when he's just holding this bible there is no one that is willing to respect him that lady was even confused because she said but your husband when you came to this village told me to destroy my, my altar i then said please just try to help me i would give you anything that you want so that you can rebuild your altar that lady then said that this altar of mine for me to rebuild it it is going to need blood i said do you need blood of a god because we have already been given four gods and as for chickens we had a lot of chickens because each and every sunday there was always someone that would be bringing a chicken to us she said no human blood brother nashi at that time that was when i sacrificed one of my girls this child of mine brother nashi forever she will be going on her periods when she goes on her periods she can only rest for something like two weeks then the following week she will be on her periods for seven days this blood it is used at that altar that old lady has since passed away but her granddaughter is the one who is now working as a traditional healer so the blood that comes out of my daughter each and every time when she is sick when she is on her period it is taken using rituals then it is fed to that altar i am the one who helped that witch to rebuild her altar then this lady then said that for this thing that you have done i want to thank you then she said that so you want wealth you want this congregants of yours to give you a love offering that will be worth something i then said yes she then said in this village I, I will give you the charms but they are not going to work the first thing that we have to do is that when one of your bishops is going to come here i'm going to give you some charms and when you have given that bishop the charms then you're going to be transferred so that you can be taken at least back to harare there there are a lot of people who are working you'll be able to get some over some love offering and you'll be able to have a better life brother nashi then there was this other time when we received a phone call from the bishop he told us that he was coming over to our village so that they can check up on the progress of the church i rushed back this i did without the knowledge of my husband i rushed back and i was told by that old woman that when i was on my period she was going to give me some herbs and the next morning i'll be on my periods this is the same herb she said that uh, 
since the old days they were using that kind of uh, herb when they want a woman to have a miscarriage if they suspect that the child that is growing inside that woman's womb is like breached like these days they do an operation but in those days there was no chance of an operation so they will give you that herb so that the baby will miscarry and then the life of the mother will not be lost she gave me that type of herb and the next morning when i was on my period she had instructed me what i was supposed to do she said that I was supposed to take those dirty sanitary pads, the one that had blood, and I had to throw them in a bucket, and I had to keep it, and I had to pour some water so that it won't get smelly. And people that know Mutoko, it is a hot place. I waited, we waited for the bishop. When the bishop came, then we started cooking. I was the one who was cooking the food that the bishop was eating. So I would take a cupful of water from that same bucket that had the pads that I was using. I was on my period at that time. And after I had given him these charms, when he returned back to Arare at our head offices, my husband was surprised when he received the call and he was told that he was going to be transferred and we were going to be leading this church where we made a lot of money. We came and then we started leading this church, which was in the affluent suburbs of Harare, not wanting to mention the place where we started working, Brother Nashi, after we had moved to Harare. My husband didn't even understand where this power was coming from. In the meantime, whilst we were at that same suburb, that was when I was told that if I wanted my husband to be more powerful, then another sacrifice was going to be required. I said, what kind of a sacrifice? I was told that the same sacrifice that I had done, the same thing that was done to my daughter, a never ending period. I then chose amongst all the congregants, there was this other beautiful girl. She was too beautiful and I even felt jealousy because of her beauty. God had created her and God had taken his time when he was creating this beautiful girl. That is the girl that I chose. She was the one who was leading our present worship choir. And then, Brother Nashi, I then returned back to Mutoko and I spoke with that old lady at that time when I returned back to Mutoko. She was just lying on her deathbed and I said, I have brought to you my sacrifice i then sacrificed that young lady she's still attending the same church and she can't get married she does not want to open up but i know the reason as to why she can't get married because i dedicated her to that traditional healer's altar my husband my husband he later found out about this because i was making these trips each and every time I was returning back to Mutoko. Each and every time when I would return back from Mutoko, then my husband would receive this mysterious gift from one of our congregants. My husband was given a house, a car. So he asked me one day, what is going on? Then I said, I do not even know what is going on. He then started praying and the way that he was praying, each and every time when he would be praying, I would feel this fire, this heat that will be burning me inside my body so much that i'll sweat so much and he would ask me if i was okay i then returned back and i spoke with that old woman's granddaughter the one who is in charge of that altar then he told then she told me what i was supposed to do so that my husband can just accept that this is the life that we will be living now brother nashi i was then given some charms that I had to put inside my private parts and I had to keep these charms inside my private parts until when I would have gone on my periods then the charms will come out with the blood. I waited for the whole month. I told my husband that I was on a prayer. I was on a Daniel's prayer. I wanted to go for at least a month without us making love and he understood everything. When the time came Brother Nashi that was when I prepared a meal for him and he ate. When he ate, later on, when we were lying in bed, when we were sleeping in bed, I told him that all of these blessings that you call blessings from the Lord, it is because of me. I then told him everything that happened, Brother Nashi. As for my husband right now, 
he said that he's planning to start his own church because uh, that old lady's granddaughter said that she can give us some charms if we start that church she is going to give us some charms and the people that will be coming to our church then we can give them this wrist bands or this other thing that they call anointing water then this anointing water this young lady said that she is going to get this anointing water from this cave that is a forbidden cave she said that there is a holy fountain there if she speaks with her ancestors then she will be taken to that cave no human being can go into that cave unless they are allowed by the gods of that mountain so i am waiting for this lady to get back to us because she said that do not start a church before i tell you my husband keeps on telling me that we have to do this we have to start our own church so this is what i did brother nashi i feel bad about it but you do not know what poverty can do to you you have no idea when you are poor you can do anything just to be successful in life your dear listeners right there was a narration of a message that was sent to me by our dear listener by one of our dear listeners and i had to give you this translation <laughs> 